God didn't say God. God, did, God didn't say that. Because can I be honest with you? When, when, when God really speaks to you and you are really submitted to leadership, he lets us know. Uh, okay, now, I, I say that for another time. But when you're really connected with leadership and you're really submitted, when we really lay over you, he, he blankets us with your spirit. And so that's why we have the tendency to know when you're doing stuff that's out of order because we have a radar system in our spirit. And at 3 o'clock in the morning while you at the club, he wakes us up and say, you know, minister so-and-so is at from Romans. Oh, y'all oh, ain't hearing what I'm saying. And he wakes us up in the middle of the night because there's a spirit spirit that's on you that's attached to us and so when he says something to you that is going to require you to do something with my covering he will let me know you're getting ready to release a covering or release something in somebody's life because I'm doing something and I need you to agree with it I'm really getting there I am and so he says listen when we're in a place of there's no communication and we hear stuff, it ain't God. So Paul says, listen, this is what I need you to do. He says, I need you to mortify your flesh through the spirit. Somebody say, through the spirit. Somebody say, lift some weights. The only thing that is really troubling for a pastor is having somebody that spots you that can't handle the weight. <laughs> I don't look I go to the gym now and I don't need nobody up over me with weight that they can't handle if you can't handle the weight don't spot me and there are always folk trying to spot us that can't handle the weight look I don't need you to carry my rag on my bag I need you to carry some weight I got some glory that's on me and if you ain't willing to carry the weight of my glory put my water down put my bag down put all of it down because I need you to carry something that's more important you worried about who gonna see you strutting across the stage with a rag but I need to be worried about what the devil is seeing when he's trying to attack me do you have the capacity to defend off of me what the devil is releasing on me that's what I need you to carry put the Bible down can't handle my weight but always want to go with me and when you're with me I play chess with you I'm trying to figure out have you grown enough to carry y'all ain't hearing me and sometimes you miss trying to carry weight because you mismanaged the moment you want me to fix your problems while you want to bear my arms You supposed to be bearing my arms defending the enemy, but you want me to fix your problems. I didn't ask you to ride to this preaching engagement for I can deal with your issues with your marriage. Okay, that maybe that's too much. But you were supposed to already be at a place of maturity because if you don't got nothing else, you got the ability to see how I handle my wife. You have the ability to see how I handle my children. You have the ability to see how I handle my problems because you're all in my intimate space when trouble and struggles arise and you get the opportunity to see me operate in a weight of glory to solve my stuff. So what you really be need to do is that pastor do it like this, he do it like this, he do it like this, and then you go home and try, try to work it out in your life let every man work out his what own soul sound I'm trying to stay with this I really am and so Paul is trying to get us to understand that we got to get to a place where we mature in the realm of the spirit so that it will enhance our ability to see that which the devil is doing in our lives and to get the revelation from which God is allowing to happen in our lives. Oh, I'm gonna say that again. So we can mature to the place where we can see what the devil is trying to do in our lives, but also we can get the revelation of what God is allowing to happen that is really helping our lives. 
Mm -hmm. So he said, listen, you got to kill your flesh because if you don't let the flesh die, if you don't let the carnal part of you that's in enmity against God, if you don't let that thing that's hindering you from trying to be all that you could be, if you don't kill that flesh daily, if you don't stop that flesh from operating at the level that it does, then it's going to hinder you from getting to the place of opportunity to go to what God is calling you. Watch this. I'm going to move. It says, as far as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Can I pause right here for a minute? I, I'm tired of folk telling me they led by God. We don't really fully understand what the leading of God is. <laughs> There's a difference between discernment and the leadership of God. <laughs> and we always say, God led me. We be lying on God. Oh, but we, well, we, are, we are lying. I could have sworn that the, the, the commandment said, thou shalt not lie. But we'll tell a lie on God in a minute. Well, pastor, God told me to do so-and-so. And when so-and-so don't manifest the way God said it was, then all of a sudden, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. it, well, it ain't God then now you got this excuse to exchange or change that which God told you to do and the best thing to do just let your pride down and say it wasn't really God it was me if we can start being more honest like that it wasn't God it was me I decided to do it and, and it's okay because every now and then you got to have the audacity to attempt something that is radical I don't have any issues with that. You should, every now and then, you should try to attend something that is radical because only radical stuff gets God's attention anyway. Mm. So he says, listen, you're led. He said, for I have not, you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. <laughs> so bondage is a spirit. Oh, okay, I'm going to say it to this side over here. Bondage is a spirit. Okay, bondage is a spirit. But how do I get the spirit of bondage in my life can I help y'all this morning what Paul is trying to get us to understand is that there is a difference between bondage and suffering okay I know we use them simultaneously or we use them together oh yeah I'm in bondage I'm suffering no no you're not because bondage and suffering are two different things. Mm, okay, let me help you. I, they're two different things and you really got to get this because this is what Paul is trying to get you to understand. Because if you're not spiritually mature, you will think that suffering is bondage and bondage is suffering. And we know that our suffering is a part of our intimate relationship with God. And so what we'll end up doing is making bondage a part of our relationship with God and it has nothing to do with it. And so we start including God in stuff that he is nowhere around. Okay, let me help you. The word bondage is a grammatical construct. It's bond and age. A bond is a slave or a first person that is in service or in financial terms, it is something that holds a value. Somebody say, holds a value. In sin, you are in bondage because the devil holds a bond on you based on the sin that you have in your life. But Jesus comes and he dies. He pays a price to release you from the sealment of the bond so that you can have liberty and freedom. That's why the text says that you won't receive the spirit of bondage again. In other words, you won't go back into that which I brought you out of. And the problem in the church is that bondage is a revolving door instead of a closed chapter. 
We got folk in and out of bondage. Instead of closing the chapter to sin and bondage, we just keep going and revolve as door. Why? Because we don't understand the liberty that has been received or been given to us. 